a lot of my um, friends and my patients who suffer from POTS and dysautonomia have written to me and said, you know, can you talk about POTS and dysautonomia uh, and particularly in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic? We're very worried. Uh, what does it mean for us? Are we more likely to get it? Are we going to be uh, vulnerable uh, to having the more severe form of illness and the risks of having this um, virus? Uh, and so I thought I would do a video. The first thing to say is there's very little guidance um, from the, the bodies, the national bodies, the international bodies about exactly uh, what this virus does for patients with POTS. Uh, we have very limited data. The reason is this is a very new disease. Um, all the evidence we have is from uh, countries that have been battling this condition. And so we've not really studied it in specific patient groups um, in a controlled, a controlled setting. Uh, nevertheless, there are certain kind of basic principles that go through my head as someone who manages patients with POTS and who has some understanding of cardiology. So I thought I'd just share my views. I think they're very much um, in line with the recommendations that have been published by the POTS UK Society, which is um, on, the, and these recommendations are on their POTS UK Facebook page. So if you get a chance, do check that out. Uh, from my perspective, there are two main issues to address. Firstly, are patients with POTS and dysautonomia more likely to catch the virus. And the reason I say this is because uh, a lot of patients I know who have POTS and dysautonomia have slightly more, um, slightly weaker immune systems. They tend to be more susceptible to, to things. So therefore they said to me, well, what do you think? Do you think we are more likely to catch it? And then secondly, and perhaps more importantly, if we do catch the virus, are we vulnerable? Are we those vulnerable patients who are more likely to be um, endangered by the complications of this virus? And can you talk about that? So the first thing I would say is this is a new virus. And because it's a new virus, we don't really have any um, um, immunity to it as such. Uh, and therefore, everyone is equally susceptible to catching the virus, as far as I understand. Uh, and therefore, patients with POTS, I don't think you are more likely to catch the virus. You're equally likely as anyone else. And therefore, I think it is really important that you take all the precautions that have been set out by the government and all the, all the health bodies, you know, trying to keep your distance, making sure you're washing hands, um, self-isolation, all that kind of stuff is really, really important because like, the virus needs human bodies to survive. If you don't surround yourself with human bodies, uh, for a prolonged period of time, then the virus will not get to you. Um, it's also important to note that actually, if you do get the virus, whilst the majority of patients, including patients with POTS, may develop just a very mild illness, it can make people feel pretty unwell, a minority of people, but they can be very unwell. So not getting the virus is an excellent idea, both for yourself and for those around you and you should take all those necessary precautions. However, the next question is, what if you are unlucky enough to catch the virus? What does that mean if you have POTS and dysautonomia? The first thing to say is, in general, patients with POTS tend to be younger, and they tend to, in my experience, have structurally normal hearts, and there is really no convincing evidence or reason to think that the virus is in any way likely to be more life-threatening in patients with POTS and dysautonomia. I feel very confident reassuring patients with this regard. I've asked my colleagues, and they all agree, that there's no reason to think. We don't have any evidence, but there's no reason to think that this will be more dangerous or will threaten your life by infecting you. However, it is important to say that as with any virus in a patient with POTS, it is more likely to make you feel iller uh, and you may end up spending more time in bed and um, compared to someone who is in a, who is a similar age, etc., who doesn't have POTS. And this is the very nature of POTS, you know, it's very easy for the balance, for the apple, apple cart to be upset and a small virus like the flu or the common cold or even coronavirus can do this. Um, 
it's important also to understand that um, the virus uh, causes high fever and the consequent dehydration that can result from having the virus can make pot symptoms a lot worse and therefore if you are unlucky enough to have the virus then of course you need to obviously self-isolate but make sure you up your fluid intake and certainly keep lots of electrolytes around you so that you can replenish with electrolytes what you want to try and avoid is dehydration lack of electrolytes yeah and because that increasing uh, your input during this acute illness will make a big difference both to how you feel during the illness but it will probably precipitate your recovery and try and get you back to baseline sooner than if you let yourself get dehydrated i think um it's also important to say that prolonged bed rest uh, it will make deconditioning worse and therefore where possible when you're at home doing a little bit of walking around and trying to just do a little bit of exercise will help again uh, it will uh, help with your recovery and it will help with the speed by, uh, with which you get back to your baseline after you recover from the virus. I don't think um, you should be surprised if all your symptoms become more noticeable when you have the coronavirus. This includes tachycardia, um, tiredness, brain fog, temperature intolerance. It may also be, you know, you may also experience things like chest discomfort and breathlessness. Um, if you get those with your POTS, then you may notice even more of this. Of course, if at any point things feel like they're uh, far, far, far worse than what you're used to, it's always good to be vigilant. It's always good to be, um, uh, to ask for help if that happens. But in general, if you see some fluctuations in how you feel, that can be attributed to the virus and the inflammation it's causing within the body. But as your immune system works against the virus, you should recover in due course. Um, the next thing to say is that, uh, you know, yes, my, most POTS patients tend to be young, but there are older POTS patients and there are patients who also have additional comorbidities, diabetes, bad lungs, etc. Uh, diabetes, bad lungs, cardiovascular disease, etc. And if you have those, then of course you have to take really, you know, be really aggressive about taking necessary precautions, but also being aggressive about seeking help if you find that you're beginning to decompensate, if you're beginning to get very breathless, etc. In that setting, it's important then to seek help. One other thing I would say is that if you feel really unwell, then getting some intravenous fluid can be really helpful. And I know that it's very difficult to get intravenous fluid, but I think there was a paper more recently by Ruzier et al. Um, if you type in R-U-Z-I-E-H et al and intravenous saline in Google, you'll come up with a publication where this guy Ruzier and his colleagues showed that intravenous fluids can make pot symptoms a lot better. And if you have a copy of that, you could potentially take it to a local hospital if your pot symptoms get really, really bad and show it to them so that they can give you intravenous fluid. Ideally, it's better for you to try and avoid going to hospital just because of the kind of pressures that the hospital are going to be under already, but also the fact that there is likely to be more infection in that environment and therefore you risk catching something there which could make things worse. So these are kind of some just basic tips. I wish I could give you more um, specific tips, but we don't have any guidance. Some people are worried about, some people who take fludrocortisone tend to be worried about the immunosuppressant effects of fludrocortisone. To my mind, I don't think it's such a big deal. I think fludrocortisone has very minimal such effect. And I think that stopping your medications if you're stable could risk decompensating your POTS. So I think stay on what you're taking. If you get, if you're unlucky enough to get the virus, do the necessary kind of precautionary things. Uh, keep really, really well hydrated, but also try wherever possible to get a little bit of recumbent exercise in, and that'll hasten your improvement once you, your body fights off the virus. Uh, so if you have any questions, I know there's not going to be a ton of support for POTS patients. There never is. Um, but if you have any questions for me, then please don't hesitate to get in touch 
particularly at such a time when everyone is stretched and uh, you may feel particularly vulnerable. Uh, so I wish you all the best. And um, again, thank you so much for all that you do for me. This is a time when we, we, when we need to come together and work collectively um, for, for the benefit of everyone. And um, I wish you all really, I wish you well, uh, all the best.